Have you ever had a dream so strange, so vivid, it felt more real than reality itself? Maybe it's not just one dream. Maybe it's the same dream over and over again. And maybe, just maybe, that's not a coincidence. What you're about to hear might sound bizarre, but what if I told you that some dreams are not just scrambled memories from your brain? What if they're messages, not from your mind, not from your past, but from something much deeper? Some call it the collective unconscious. Others call it the quantum field of possibilities. The name doesn't really matter. What truly matters is what these dreams are trying to tell you. Today, we'll explore a nearly forbidden idea that dreams are communications, not from ghosts, not from angels, but from a part of you that operates on a level science is just beginning to understand. And if you stay until the end, you'll see why certain dreams keep repeating what they mean in your symbolic world and how all of this connects with the laws that govern reality itself. So subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, because when you do, YouTube knows you want to dive even deeper into content like this. Most people think dreaming is just some random memory overload, a way for the brain to clean itself at the end of the day. But what if that's only part of the story? The truth is, dreaming might be one of the most mysterious experiences of human consciousness. Because during sleep, something fascinating happens. Your brain stops following the logical rules of waking life and starts operating as if it's tapping into different layers of reality. And no, this isn't just spiritual talk. Neuroscience already shows that during REM sleep, certain regions of the brain, the ones responsible for time perception and rational control, go quiet. What's left is a space where symbols, emotions, and archetypes come alive. Now here's the provocative part. What if those repeating dreams, the ones that show up again and again with eerily similar details, are actually signals, like your unconscious mind trying to send you a notification, but you still haven't opened it? Think about it. Why do certain dreams only show up when we're in crisis or when there's a major life decision ahead? Maybe deep down dreaming is a kind of language our rational mind hasn't learned to decode yet, but our emotional body understands instantly. And if it's true that there's a layer of reality where everything is connected, like quantum physics suggests, then maybe dreams are the bridge between the visible and the invisible. So the question is, what are your dreams trying to show you? Here's one kind of dream almost everyone has. You're trying to run, but your legs won't move. Or you're trying to scream, but your voice just won't come out. You wake up breathless, maybe sweating, with this overwhelming feeling, like something stopped you from acting. That kind of dream isn't random. It carries an encoded message. And the first thing we need to understand is this. Dreams don't speak in logic. They speak in symbols, in sensations, in metaphors, in deep psychology, especially Jungian theory. Dreams are a way for the unconscious to speak to the conscious mind. But this language is symbolic, and that's where most people get lost. If you dream you're falling off a building, it doesn't mean you're actually going to fall but it might reflect a loss of control somewhere in your life, a buried fear, an internal collapse. Now layer that with what modern physics is starting to suggest. That reality might not be as solid as it looks, that everything is made of particles behaving in weird ways, depending on who's observing. That's the famous Heisenberg uncertainty principle, and it opens up a wild possibility that the very act of perceiving changes what is perceived. In other words, when you dream, maybe you're accessing a layer of reality where your emotions, your traumas, your deepest intentions organize themselves as images. Like your unconscious is showing you a movie based on your inner world. It's like your inner universe is trying to tell you something you're not ready or not able. So here while awake, 
And here's the first big key. Dreams are maps, not territories. What you see in them shouldn't be taken literally. It should be explored. Look at the emotional tone, the life context, the symbols that keep coming back. Want an example? Picture someone stuck in a toxic relationship without realizing it. They start dreaming about a dark house with locked doors and a feel of being trapped. The house is them. The darkness is what they don't want to face. The doors? The exits, they believe, don't exist. See the depth of this language? Now here's the second key. Recurring dreams are alerts you've ignored. When the same image shows up over and over, your unconscious is saying, you really need to look at this. And the more you ignore it, the louder it gets. It's like the universe or your inner field turns up the volume until you finally pay attention. Take a breath because it's about to get deeper. There's a branch of quantum theory called the many worlds interpretation. It suggests that all possibilities exist at once in parallel realities. In other words, there are multiple yous living different versions of your life. Sounds crazy, right? But what if dreaming is a way to access those parallel realities? As if during sleep, your consciousness tunes in to a frequency where you're living another version of yourself and brings back a glimpse. Maybe that dream where you're living a totally different life in a city you've never been to, with people you've never met, isn't just fantasy. Maybe it's a window, a quantum glitch. That would explain why some dreams feel so emotionally real, even if they make no logical sense. Which brings us to one of the most powerful ideas in this entire video. To dream is to navigate other versions of yourself. What you find there might be a warning, a memory, or even a glimpse of a possible future. Science hasn't proven this yet, but human experience keeps pointing in that direction. From ancient shamans to modern therapists, the message is the same. Dreaming is a form of connection. Connection to what? That depends on what you believe. It could be your higher self, the collective unconscious, God, alternate timelines, or information fields. The name doesn't matter. What matters is what you do with it. For example, when you wake from a vivid dream, your first reaction is usually confusion. But if you pause and feel, instead of trying to figure it out, something shifts. You begin to remember parts of yourself that were long forgotten. You start seeing patterns. And slowly, the dream stops being a mystery and becomes a key. A key to doors inside you that you didn't even know were locked. And maybe, just maybe, that's the true purpose of dreaming. Now that you understand dreams might be symbolic messages, maybe even portals to other versions of yourself. Another question comes up. Why do most people simply ignore their dreams? The answer is simple, yet uncomfortable. We've been trained to only value what's rational. Anything that doesn't follow linear logic gets labeled as nonsense, superstition, or at best, irrelevant. But here's the danger. That mindset shuts down the one part of us that still speaks in emotional truth, the unconscious. Think about what happens when you ignore physical symptoms for too long. The body gets sick. With dreams, it's the same. When you ignore the soul signals, it starts to scream through images that get more and more intense. Nightmares are not enemies. They are SOS messages. It's like your unconscious saying, you didn't hear me during the day. So now, while you sleep, I'll show you what you need to see. And more often than not, what it shows is exactly what your conch of therapist once shared the case of a man who had the same nightmare for years. Driving at high speed down a narrow road with no brakes. He'd always wake up in a cold sweat. It took a long time, but he finally understood. That runaway car was his life. He was stuck in a job he hated, on autopilot, afraid to stop. 
and once he made the decision to change, the dream vanished. Forever. The truth is, the unconscious doesn't want to punish you. It wants to show you where you're stuck, and the way it speaks is through images. That brings us to the next insight. Those who listen to their dreams break, and there's more. Science has shown that during sleep, the brain enters very specific frequency states, like theta, which are also present in deep meditation. Meaning, when you're dreaming, your brain operates similarly to someone in a trance or altered state, and that might explain why so many spiritual traditions say dreams connect you to higher realms. But is there any real basis for this? Or is it just belief? Here's where things begin to converge. Fist now, connect this with accounts of people who, during lucid dreams or out-of-body experiences, say they saw the truth, the whole, or the meaning of everything. Is that really coincidence? Maybe dreams are more than subjective experiences. Maybe they're connections to this implicate order, a direct link to the source of reality, where time, space, and identity follow entirely different rules. Here's a bold thought. Dreaming is participating in the creation of reality. If thoughts can influence matter, as many quantum intention experiments suggest, then what you feel, live, and understand in dreams can absolutely impact your waking life. Not because dreams are magic, but because they reconfigure your inner world. And the world you live in is a reflection of what's inside. That's why, when you truly get what your dream is showing you, something shifts. That internal shift starts to show up in your choices, your mood, your relationships. Now think, how many times have you dreamed something and days later it happens? A symbol, a scene, a conversation, and when it happens, you get that eerie feeling. I've seen this before. That's called dream deja vu. Some researchers believe it's just memory confusion, but others think dreaming lets you explore potential futures and unconsciously choose which path will unfold. If that's true, then dreams are rehearsals for reality. It's as if your soul were testing out different lives, timelines, and futures before committing to one. So here's the question. If you could use your dreams to shape reality, would you? The answer lies in what you do with them. You can ignore them, write them off as random mental noise, or you can start writing them down, feeling into them, reflecting, and slowly you'll notice there's a pattern, a message, an intelligence behind it all. Maybe it's not the universe sending you signs. Maybe it's you the most awakened, expanded part of you, trying to make you wake up. But there's something no one tells you about dreams. They're not just messages coming from within. Sometimes they're responses, answers to questions you didn't even know you were asking. And once you start paying attention, something strange happens. Coincidences multiply. People from the past resurface. Intuition sharpens and the world starts responding, as if it's listening. Are dreams opening channels to a higher consciousness? Or is it you becoming more sensitive to life's synchronicities the moment you remember them? Maybe both are true. And maybe you're already in the middle of a message cycle that started in a dream and will end in a decision, a decision only you can make. Because sometimes all the universe wants is for you to truly look, to truly listen. And if you've made it this far, maybe this is the moment to take the next step. There's another video appearing on the screen right now. It might hold exactly what you need to hear to keep going. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.